Hello crypto fam, thanks for tuning back to my channel. In today's video, we will discuss how to verify deployed smart contracts on Etherscan. Now the process remains same, even if you have deployed your smart contract on Polygon and want to deploy it on Polygon Scan. Now many of you have been requesting for this video, so here you go. One more thing that many of you seems confused about is the constructor argument ABI that you need to provide while verifying your smart contract. So we will discuss that as well in this video as to how to obtain your constructor argument in ABI encoded format or when do you need to provide them and when not. Now first let's discuss who needs to verify smart contract. So only if you have written your own smart contract and deployed on the Ethereum or Polygon or PSC blockchain, then you need to verify your smart contract. If you have created your NFTs using OpenSea website, then you don't need to verify anything. Now it is not mandatory to verify smart contract. However, it is recommended that you verify your smart contract so that everybody can see your source code and they can trust that they are not minting or buying NFTs from malicious sources. So that's why it is very much recommended that you verify your smart contracts. So let's start the video and first we are going to create a smart contract which we are then going to deploy on Rinkeby testnet and then we will try to verify this on the Rinkeby Etherscan. First we will go to open Zeppelin's contract wizard. Here this is a really cool way of creating smart contracts quickly. So I'll give you the link into the description so be sure to check it out. And let's create any one of these. Let's create an ERC1155 contract. This is a simple ERC1155 contract. I selected Mintable and Unival is already selected. And let's, we can also open this in Remix from here itself. So I'm clicking on Open in Remix. Now this is gonna open Remix. So you can see this is the contract that was created for us. I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly rename this contract to MyToken.Soul. We have my token dot soul. Now, also, I would like to demonstrate here how to add constructor arguments ABI. So, I am going to be passing here string memory. We are instead of hard coding it here in our smart contract, we are actually going to pass this constructor argument when we are actually deploying our smart contract. If you don't do that, then you really don't need to pass the constructor arguments ABI at this step when we verify our smart contract. Don't worry if you do not understand what I'm saying right now. I'll explain it as we go ahead and try to verify the smart contract on Etherscan. Now I'm going to compile this smart contract the settings. You can also enable optimization. So if you are trying to deploy this on the mainnet, you should definitely enable the optimization. It should save you some gas fees. Let's click on compile my token, but be sure to remember this setting. If you enable optimization, because later when we verify our smart contract, we will need to provide this on the ether scan. So if you don't select this, then at the time of verifying your smart contract, don't select it there as well. Okay, so remember all these settings. Now let's compile. It's successful. Now, this is the most important thing here. You would want to select injected web3 so that we can interact the smart contract using our metamask also i'm going to demonstrate this today on the rinkeby testnet so you can also first try this out on rinkeby testnet and if things go well then you can actually go ahead and deploy this on mainnet the process is completely similar whether you are doing it on ether scan or you do it on polygon scan please be sure to check that you are on rinkeby testnet please don't select any mainnet by mistake because whatever network you are connected to this contract is going to get deployed on that so be sure to check out that you are on one of the test nets when you are doing this on testnet. Now I'm going to select here my token dot soul and to deploy I'm going to pass a string URI. This is actually our metadata URI. So I need to pass here a metadata URI. Let me go quickly to one of my projects on GitHub and I'm just going to grab a metadata URI. I'm going to paste it over here. If you don't understand what this metadata URI is in other stuff and you want to know more about ERC1155 contracts you can check out my other full walkthrough tutorial I'm going to give you the link into the description so be sure to check it out now I'm clicking on deploy now metamask is going to ask me for some permission I'm clicking confirm it 
will take some time to deploy this in the Rinky B testnet. Let's wait. Okay, so now it is successful, and here you can see we have our contact address. Let's copy this and now let's get to rinkb.etherscan.io. Let's paste our address here. Okay, I think it is going to take some time. Okay, now our contract is here. Let's try to mint one NFT out of this contract so that we can check whether this is correct or not. So, so for this mint function, we have to pass an address, a token ID, and how many of those token ID we want to mint. Since this is NFT, we would pass only one because we are going to mint only one amount of that particular token ID. Each token ID is going to be unique for our case. And data is really optional for us so we are going to just pass this as empty and the address is going to be my own address i want to mint it against my own address first so let me pass my address id is going to be one amount is one let's click transact again we need to provide the permission confirm okay let's view this on etherscan Okay, let's copy our contact address and let's check it on test nets on OpenSea. And I'm clicking on my collections. And here I'm going to click on import an existing smart contract live on test net. I'll pass my smart contract submit just to see that everything is working fine. This is just optional to see. Okay, we can see we have minted one item of ID1. We can actually you can see the token ID is one. This is the contact address and the blockchain is RingKB. Okay. Now we have validated that this is working fine and we have successfully deployed it. Now let's copy again the contact address. Let's get back to Etherscan again. And let's click on this contract tab. And here you can see that Etherscan is asking us to verify and publish this, our source code. Until we verify and publish our source code, other people cannot see whatever source code we have used. So in order to build trust and that uh, the other users are really not interacting with any malicious contract, we should always verify and publish our smart contracts. So let's click on verify and publish. And it is already it has already populated the contract address. And this is really interesting. So we are going to select Solidity single file. And in just a bit, I'll show you how to get this solidity single file because if you just directly try to copy paste this into the ether scan this is not going to work you actually have to use a flattener and i'll just tell you in a bit how to use that and the compiler version we are to check your compiler version just go back and see that we use 0.8.7 so this is the exact compiler that you should select over here and the license type we are going to select MIT since this is the license of Open Zeppelin, and since we are importing other Open Zeppelin libraries, it makes sense to use this. And I'm clicking on continue. Now there is a lot of things going on over here. Let's go one by one. The contact address is already pre-filled by Etherscan, and in optimization we have to select yes because as you remember that I selected yes before compiling my contract. Now here. We need to enter the solidity contract code below and since we selected previously a single file now what we need to do is we need to convert this file and flatten it out now what do i mean by flatten it out so as you can observe there are some import statements these are all different libraries and they themselves contain a lot of code so we need to flatten this out so that all the code that is that goes into this file is actually pasted out over here and all the code that goes into this file is going to be pasted out over here and let me show you how to flatten this contract and later on i'll also show you a comparison between both the files the unflattened file which is our original file and a flattened file and we'll see what difference happened when we actually flattened this contract so let me go back to this workspace by clicking over here and i am going to click on my token dot soul right click and click on flatten now as you can see there is already a existing my token underscore flat dot soul file and i think when we came from the contracts wizard of open zeppelin we got the flattened file as well however once we click right click click flatten and give the permissions 
this is the flattened file okay that we observe now i'm going to show you a difference between this flattened file and our normal file let me copy both the files and put it into any online comparison of two files so here the left side i'm going to put this is the flattened file and this is our main source code main smart contract paste it and i'm going to compare both okay as you can see in the flattened file there is some extra code which is added over on the top and if i completely scroll down on the bottom i can see this contract remains same so our base original contract that we wrote to set uri mint and mint bash all this code is similar in both the spaces however these two import statements are actually replaced by the entire code of those files okay so that is what flattener is doing it is simply taking up this import statement and actually pasting out whatever is there in these files i can show this files to you on github as well so give me a second okay so as you can see this is the file erc1155.sol and this file actually got copied and pasted in the import section okay now we have obtained this flattened file let me close other files and this is what we need to input in the ether scan okay so i am going to command a command c copy all the file and get back to my ether scan and under enter the solidity contract below paste it okay now after this this thing is very interesting and i think this has confused a lot of you so let me explain you what this thing is constructor arguments abi encoded now this is generally prefilled by etherscan itself in case it is not prefilled let me show you how to get it and then let me tell you what is the meaning of abi okay so you have to go to tool called abi hex encoder i'm going to give you the link into the description and here you have to paste your abi let me show you how to get the abi of the contract go back to remix click on this tab go here and select your file first go to this symbol and in the contract select my token dot soul it's important that this file is also open and copy the abi from here copy it. go back to hash x dot org paste your abi here and click on parse and as you can see it is asking us for the uri so we have to paste here exactly the same uri that we pasted while deploying so as you remember i copied it from one of my codes so i'm going to again copy that same uri and paste here and as you can see it has provided me the abi hex encoding i'm going to copy this and i'm going to go back to link by command f command v you can see it's exactly same so that is the way you can get abi encoded constructor arguments and in case you are confused whether you need constructor arguments or not most probably you don't need it because etherscan is anyway going to detect it and going to repopulate this so in case you are not seeing that that means you most likely don't need it you only need it in cases like this where you are actually passing this constructor arguments at the time of deploying your smart contracts okay in case you have hard coded any value over here and you don't pass anything at the time of deployment then you don't need to fill this constructor argument abi encoded field now let's quickly talk about what is an abi so i have pulled up this article from ethereum.stackexchange.com i'll give you the link into the description so basically an ethereum smart contract is a bytecode deployed on the ethereum blockchain let me go back to remix and explain you what does this mean so this is the smart contract that we have written this is actually written in a high level language in solidity this is in human readable format now when we pass this to the compiler it is going to spit out a bytecode version let me go back to the link ab ether scan and show you this is the contract bytecode actually this is how it gets stored on the ethereum blockchain okay now the problem there is there could be several functions in a contract and abi is necessary so that you can specify which function in the contract to invoke 
as well as to get a guarantee that the function will return data in the format you are expecting. Let me show you the ABI as well. So if you see under this compiler section, you can see the ABI and the bytecode. Okay, I'm going to copy this ABI and let's paste it in Remix itself. So let me create a new file here. Let me say ABI. These are typically JSON files. So I'm going to say ABI.json and I'm going to paste it. Whatever I copied. So take a look here. Oh, I'm not sure if I copied it correctly. Let me go back to. Okay, here I'm going to select my token. And then I'm going to copy the ABI. Come back here and paste it. Now you can see there is this underscore URI that we passed into our constructor. You can see its type is string. Similarly, let's search for the mint function. Now you can see this is the mint function and you can see check out the inputs that it takes and you can get all the information on how to call this specific mint function so that's the role of abi now in order to get your constructor arguments as abi encoded format you can use tools like this abi.hashhex.org and you can paste in your abi you can actually provide the value of your constructor argument and here you can actually get the ABI encoded constructor argument. As you can see, we already have talked about constructor arguments ABI encoded, and we really don't need contract library address. And let's click on NISC settings. Now, here this is important for you to understand what is this 200. As you remember, in Remix, we selected 200 while doing the optimization. So that's what you have to do here. You have to select 200. And everything else you don't need to change anything and I'm going to click on the traffic lights now I'm going to click verify now I'm clicking verify and publish as you can see our contract is successfully verified this is the contract bytecode now I'm going back to remix to copy the contract address and I'm again heading back to rinkb.etherscan, pasting my contract address. And now you can see the contract tab. There is a green check mark, and you can also see that our source code is published. So that is it, folks. That's how you verify your smart contract on Etherscan. The process is completely same for Polygon Scan as well. So that is it, folks. Hope you liked the video. If you did, please like this video subscribe to my channel and if you had any doubts leave them in the comments below and i'll try to help you all and i'll catch you in the next video bye bye